Hi. In this video, we will show you how to program PLC in a wastewater treatment tank project. So we start with create a new project in TI Portal software. You add the project name and the file emplacement. You choosing the hardware configuration and you pick up the right CPU, the power supply series, for your project. As you see, in our case, we choose the serial CPU, S7300, and the serial 306, 5 ampere, for the power supply. In this part, we will explaining how to start the system with the real button and through the human machine interface too. As you see here, we have two buttons. The green one is for the manual starting. The PLC tag of this one is SDB and the second red one is for the manual stop. The PLC tag of the stop button is TSB and the same thing, for the HMI interface, the read one, is for stopping the system, the PLC tag for this one is, SP virtual, and the second tag is, ST virtual, is for the green button, in the HMI screen. As you see, when we push, the manual start button, the MMS tag, gets energized, and that, means, keeping the system running up. And, when we push the manually stop button, the MMS tag, get down, that means stop running the system. The same thing, for the HMI buttons. The only difference, is, that the first buttons, are physical, we can touch them, and the other virtual ones, cannot be touched, but they do, the same task. Now, we jump to show you, how it looks in, TIA Portal software. Before, starting your programming, it's better to add, firstly, the inputs, and, the output tags. And, if you need to add more tags, you can do it after. As you see below, we have two conditions to get started the manual control mode. The first one, is touching up, the manual mode switch, in the HMI screen, to switch on the manually control. And the second condition, is to keep the system booting, by the MMS memory bit. We have already talked about this last one. So. Now we can start the manual control. We starting by presenting the different components of the HMI screen. We have here, two buttons. This one, is for controlling the first pump. And the second button, is for controlling, the pump number two. There is, two displays here, to display the running time of each pump. That one for the pump one, and this one for the pump number two. And another display to show us the tank level percentage. At the top, we have a selector, to choose between the tow modes, automatic, and manual. So, when we touch the HMI screen button, to control the pump number one, the button color, switch to the green, to show us, 
that button is activated and the pump 1 is energized. Now, the system start pumping water out the tank. When we touched the button, for a second time, we turned off the pump, and the button switched to red. And, the same thing, for pump number 2. In the manual mode, we can start and stop each pumps, anytime we need, also we can start them, simultaneously. For locking the system, we have the low low level float sensor, FT1, when this one activated, the system is locked to protect the pumps, for the same purpose, we have this, closed contact switches, RT1 and, RT2, for overload protection. Now, we jump to show you, how it looks in, TIA Portal software. As you see here, we have a counter, that triggers by a falling front, of the pump 1 signal, and it goes to 0, reset, by a falling front, of the pump 2 signal. In the initial state, the value of the counter, equal to 0, so, the contactor comparator is triggered. We push the button, to start, and we select the automatic mod. When water, reach the high level, the pump 1 start pumping water, and, the pump signal, switched from 0 to 1. Water reach the low level, the pump stopped, and the signal, shift to 0 again, the operation of switching, from the high state to the low state of the pump signal, gives us the falling front, and this operation is counted by the counter. To cancel the comparator condition, in this case, the counter value equal to zero, and to start the second cycle, with the second condition, in this case, counter value greater than zero. The same process is repeated, for the pump number two. As you see, the stoppage of the pump two, provoked the comparator reset, and the return to the value zero like the preceding state. So now, we have done programming PLC, to execute the flip-flop mod, operate two pumps, alternately. As you see here, we have all the sensors are not activated, that because, the tank is in the low low level. When water reached the high level, the float sensor activate, and the pump 1, start pumping water outside the tank. Now, water reached the low level, the pump 1 stopped pumping out water, and the counter value changed, it means the first condition is changed too. And the second cycle turn on, when the pump number 2 start, as you see here, the counter value is changed, it means the first condition is cancelled, and the second condition is started. Now the counter value, back to zero, that means in the next cycle, the pump number one, will work again. You had noticed, that the sensor, FT3, did not work, but despite this, the process has continued its function. This is what we gon' explain in the next part, but before doing that, take a look on the TIA portal programming.
safety is a very important thing in the field of industry, that's why every automation engineer, must take safety precautions in the designing, and programming of the process control system. For more security, we have added this emergency program, to make sure the work is done, even if one pump breaks down, the other one go back to work. The programming of this action is very simple. The principle is, if the pump stops and the water level does not reach the low level, then the waiting pump, resumes work. And to get this with ladder programming, we make a contact here, energized by a pump falling front, in series with an open contacts of the low level float sensors. This reflects an abnormal stopping effect, caused by an overload of the pump. The other pump on standby, must resume work, to complete the pumping process, to achieve the lower level. We trying to give you some programming tips, to help you in your own PLC programming. I hope that was helpful for you. And don't forget to subscribe in the channel, and leave your question in the comments. for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. With your encouragement we continue.